Hi guys and welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia and I'm coming to you from Germany. Today is Sunday the 6th of May 2018, which is crazy. Um, and I'm recording this, as I said, from Germany. This is a knitting podcast. If you haven't watched before, welcome. I hope you'll enjoy it. And if you're coming back, thank you ever so much for coming back every week. I really appreciate my regular viewers, of course. Um, today is actually not going to be a um, knitting podcast only, but I'm also going to show some spinning, which that hasn't happened in ages. So I'm very excited about that. But before we jump into all of that, first of all, we have a group on Ravelry called the Happy Knitting Podcast Group. And that is where you can find um, giveaways, knit-alongs, question threads, just um, lots of yarny things to check out. So if you are on Ravelry, please feel free to check that out. Um, and also, um, you can find me on Ravelry as Wipfi, which is W-U-E-P-F-I. And you can find me on Instagram as The Happy Knitting Podcast, which is usually the best place to catch up with me. Unless you want to write me a message, then Ravelry might be the better option. Anyways, um, we currently have a knit along. Oh my gosh. We currently have a knit along running, which is the sock blankathon. That is a knit along to knit with a sock blank, as the name suggests, very creatively, I'm sure. Um, and that is wrapping up. We are going to finish on May 15th, which is Tuesday in a week. So you have about 10 days to enter your finished objects. And if you don't manage to finish, make sure to enter them in the chat thread. I will be drawing prizes after that. So on the net, um, podcast episode following that, which I'm saying in advance, it might be delayed because we might be going away, but more on that later anyways. Just please enter your finished objects and check out the chat thread because there is so much inspiration there, you guys. And yeah, that is that. I have also decided to start a new knit along because I had a look at my stash. And yes, my stash is very, very big by now. I realize I have over 10 sweater quantities of yarn. Most of them not um, indie dyed yarn, I, I shall say, but still, I have so much yarn and at the moment I seriously have a not enough knitting time problem in my life. So I decided we should do a new knit along called the Big Summer Stash Down. So the idea is that at least I, what I want to do is I want to just use my stash more. Um, I'm not going to do a yarn diet or anything like that because that's just not fun and usually makes me want to buy yarn more. Instead, I just want to make more use of my stash rather than hoarding it because there are so many things in my stash that I don't want to cast on because it seems precious or crazy to, to cast it on. And yes, I'm moving around. Sorry about that. But I just want to cast on and use my stash because I have it to use it and not to look at it. So I just thought that would be really, really fun. I just want to count how many skeins I use for my stash as well, just sort of like a small personal challenge on top of the Ravelry challenge that I've already set myself to knit 100 um, objects this year. I think I'm up to like 31 or something now, so I'm well underway. We'll see how that goes. So anyways, if you guys want to join in, I think that would be really, really fun. Let's just knit from stash. Maybe dig out some really old skeins or maybe dig out some skeins that are fancy and you haven't dared to use them yet. Um, what do you guys think in terms of an end date? I was thinking like end of August, so like right into summer, but that's, that, that's a really long time. So I'm not quite sure yet. I also don't know if I, if I want, just, want to just keep it informal and just draw random prizes. Or if, you, if you're going to do a proper sort of start date, end date thing. I'm not really sure. So let me, get, let me know what you think. Apparently I can't talk today. Today is May 6th and I'm declaring that today is the start of day. So at, as soon as I finish this podcast, I'm going to just cast on a lot of stuff and not feel bad about it. So if you want to join in, that would be really, really fun. So I create threads on Ravelry, of course, and would love to hear your thoughts. Today's um, episode is, of course, brought to you by very cold um, coffee, which used to be warm at some point, but then I left it aside because I was spinning. So yeah, that is out of the way now, as you should. If you want to get in touch with me regarding maybe a prize, donation, pattern prizes, anything like that, 
I would of course appreciate that. Um, you can always get in touch, like I said, through Ravelry or Instagram. So, um, should we do knitting or spinning first? Let's do knitting because some people might not be interested in spinning. So I didn't think I was going to have a finished object, but you guys, I am so, so, so excited. Dum, da, da, da. I might be a bit over enthusiastic today. Anyways, remember this? This is the Fern and Feather Sweater by Jennifer Steingas. Um, I have been having two sweaters on my needles forever and none of them ever was close to being done. And I finally <laughs> and I was like, well, I'll just start one sleeve. And suddenly I was like, I actually can finish this thing. I think in my mind I was so stuck on those two sweaters that I never really thought that they will ever end. And then suddenly they did. So I think I did one sleeve in one day and then most of the second sleeve yesterday. And you guys, we have a finished sweater. Isn't this exciting? I am not wearing it today because A, it is super hot and I would die. And secondly, um, I blocked it last night. I hung it out this morning when it was still slightly damp in the sun. So it's mostly dry now, but I don't want to put it on until it is 100% dry. But you guys, look at this. I am so happy with this. I kind of fell out of love with this project for some reason. I think mainly to do with the yarn. I love the yarn. This is a yarn I picked up in Kempten. It's an Austrian 100% wool, which I don't think is very easy to find. It was just a sort of, I th I'm thinking it's by like a small brand or something. But I found it in a yarn store and picked up a sweater quantity and it's a very, very woolly yarn. I really liked it in the beginning, but I think what was bothering me was that it is not only very rustic, it also was a little bit thick and thin. So I kind of fell out of love with it and I swatched for this and I washed the swatch and the swatch came out really, really nice. And I know I should have just trusted my swatch, but it didn't feel that nice when I was knitting it. I think the gauge was kind of too tight and stiff for me. So I blocked this quite aggressively and now it actually feels really nice again. If I were to knit this again, this is a DK yarn, I think. I knit this on four, US size four, 3.5 millimeter needles. I would probably go up a needle size, but it did actually make a really nice fabric. So I'm actually quite happy with it. So just to give you a close up of my color work, this is what it looks like. Um, because my gauge is always off, I can't really tell you what size I did anymore. Not that it really matters. But I did do follow the pattern, except for, of course, I did my own sleeve decreases and my own um, waist decreases. And this turned out a little bit shorter than I thought it would be. It just looks massive, but it's not really that massive. But I really do like it. And no, I haven't woven in any of my ends. I also, if you might remember, this is how the neckline is supposed to be. But I didn't like it, so then I actually knit a neckline and it was, I think that was part of why I was knitting on it because I just felt like it was all wrong. So I actually, I, I know I should have just blocked it out, but I just didn't want to. So I ripped out the neckline again and I'm liking it much more now because I do like sort of like an open neckline. I don't like it when it's like all constricting me up on my neck. So this is done. Um, I'm going to show it to you again when I actually wear it, but I'm very happy with it. And I'm also very happy to have this off the needles. This is what my floats look like. In case you're interested, I always like the look of floats. They're just really pretty, especially when they're blocked out. Talking about blocking, after washing this, the water was so gross and murky and green and kind of disgusting. But now, like I said, it's actually come out really nice. And I think this is going to be a really nice sweater once um, autumn and winter hits, which yes, I am excited about it because I am not a summer person. So that is my fern and feather sweater. And that is actually it in terms of my finished objects. So I will move on to works in progress. Talking about sweaters, let's just keep on that topic. Um, this is my favorite, favorite project bag I have. Like usually when I have project bags, I kind of swap them around because I get sick of some of them. And then 
but this is just i always use this bag i love it so much and i know i'm not sponsored by them um i was sent this quite a while ago from the girls of lamy project bags and they gave one away as well and it's just perfect also it has like a sturdy canvas at the top and i have attached my pins to it and yes i think it is so fun so anyways, um, I wasn't going to talk about the bag, was I? In here is my Blofjell sweater by Ellie of Scandia Knits. I'm still on the body, but I think I've made some progress since I last showed this to you. So, this is where we are with that. I mentioned last time I showed this to you that the fit on the yoke of this wasn't too perfect on me. I think it's because I usually do my sweaters more oversized, but I wanted this one to be quite fitted because I thought it looked really nice on Ellie. And yeah, I'm not a very fitted garment person, but I just wanted to try it. But so I'm hoping once I block it, it'll fit better. I had some issues with my row gauge, so this is nothing to do with the pattern. This is just me personally. Also, I thought this neckline was also quite tight around my neck when I wore it. It goes quite high up I guess which is totally the way uh, the way it's supposed to be I just don't know if I personally like it so I'm not sure maybe I'll just block it out and it'll be fine which is most likely maybe I'll double it up and that way it'll be thinner but a little bit more roomy or maybe I'll rip it out and re-knit the neckline I'm not quite sure yet I'm still really really loving this project the yarn that I'm using for the millionth time is a drops flora which i talked about plenty last episode because i bought another bunch um this is an alpaca and wool blend and i love it for garments it's just the perfect garment yarn for me it's still a wool proper wool yarn but it is also very soft and it's just got a great feel to it so that is that and i'm knitting that on 3.5 millimeter needles in case i didn't mention i basically knit all my shawls and sweaters on 3.5 millimeter needles no, I'm completely lying to you. That's what I usually do. With this one, I actually went down because my gauge was so off. So I'm doing 3.0 needles for the body and 3.25 needles for the yoke. That's a very smart move, wasn't it? Anyways, let's just move on. Coffee to the rescue. So let's talk about some socks because I mentioned last week that my sock mojo is back and it is back with a bang and I just want to knit all the socks like I really just planned yesterday to cast on all the socks and then I didn't and I was going to do it today but now it's like four o'clock or something and I still haven't cast on so I really need to get cracking on casting on some more but I have two pairs that I'm already working on. This pair you've seen before this is my um, biscotti yarns um pair of socks um and i have finished the first one biscotti yarns is a canadian dyer famous for their self-striping i picked this up in vienna and oh my gosh i love this so much so i didn't pull out my sock blockers because i'm a lazy knitter but as you can see the first sock is done i put in an afterthought heel i think i already had that in last time i showed this to you and so i just finished the first sock Um, this colorway is called Knit It With Your Best Shot, by the way. And I have since started, um, yesterday I started the second sock. I made them to match. And yeah, I'm just knitting on it. And for the second one, I'm just probably going to knit the tube and then put in the afterthought heel once I'm done. Whereas with self-striping socks, with the first one, I like to put in the heel while I'm still not finished with the toe so I can place the heel at the perfect point between stripes but then still get the perfect fit by trying it on and putting in the toe afterwards if that makes any sense. So yeah these are my socks and um, these are knit on US size 1 2.25 millimeter US size I already said that US size 1 needles and I'm using my Chaogu lace red lace needles which are my favorite sock needles at the moment. The other pair you haven't seen before, but I mentioned on my last podcast that Kai has been asking for more socks. So I cast these on, I think, straight after recording. 
that true? Yeah, I think it is. And I decided to cut, he, Kai has a stash. He has a stash of sock yarns that he either bought or I bought for him, that of yarn that is specifically for socks for him. So I just pulled out a skein from his stash. Um, and this is a yarn by Bärenwolle, who is Vicky, who has sadly stopped dyeing yarn. I think she stopped dyeing about a month ago or something and everyone was really, really shocked, including myself. So I think, including this one, I have two skeins in my stash. And I just decided, well, why not just knit this up? This is a one-of-a-kind colorway of, her, of colorway of hers, which is a one-of-a-bear colorway in her 80-20 sock. And I'm, I'm feeling really bad showing this to you because you can't get it anymore. But yeah, she's moved on to different things, which is totally um, up to her, of course. So this yarn, Kai picked this about a year ago, maybe. And he thought it was Germany colors. Um, it is definitely red gold and, well, it's not really black, it's more like a gray. But we are both really excited about the World Cup and these look fun. So I just decided to cast these on for him. And you guys, I finished the sock. So these are totally Kaya socks if you have been following this podcast and you know about his love of socks. Um, these are crazy pooling, kind of very, very weird socks and I really like how they are knitting up. Um, I tried this on him last night and the first one fits perfectly. And what I usually do with his socks is I knit to... Um, 16 stitches per needle on the toe, but then leave them on the needles, let him try it on, and if it's too uh, too short, then I can just knit the toe a little bit longer. But these were fine, so I just kitchenered them last night. As you can see, it's a plain vanilla sock with a fish lips kiss heel, and yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. This really flew off my needles in like five days. So yeah, and for him, I'm doing 68 stitches on a US size one because he does have bigger feet and these fit him really, really well. So I'm very happy with that. Um, yeah, I haven't cast on the second one, which is why my needle is empty, but I should cast that on maybe tonight. Maybe, well, I want to cast on new things. But we'll see how it goes. Um, and he will have some new socks because he's complaining a lot about his lack of socks, which is not really true because he has like 20 plus pairs. But oh well. My last work in progress is um, in the very full bag by now. This is my upside down flamingo bag. And in here is my fading point shawl. So the fading point is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. It's a rectangular wrap that's knit out of five colors and I'm knitting mine entirely out of stash, which makes me really, really proud. Um, five skeins out of my stash but unfortunately it doesn't count yet because we hadn't started the summer stash down, but oh well. So anyways, this is a fading point um, and I am almost done with the first half. So how am I going to show this to you? You get the idea. So last time I was on this pink somewhere around here, I think, when I showed this to you last week. And as you can see, I have now faded from well, I should go through all the colors. This one is um, a Hokania Botany Lace in a colorway with a number. Um, this one, which I really like, is Family, Tri um, Family Tree Yarns in the Bunny Rabbit colorway. This pink is a Dream in Color Smooshy Cashmere Yarn in the, I think, Rose Petals colorway. And then now I joined in uh, this color, which I really, really, really love. Um, it's going to be hard to show, but this is a glitter yarn that I got in a D stash. It is um, Herbstblatt Regina, who has a Herbstblatt Regina podcast in the Speckled Eggs colorway in a glitter base. And I have just um, finished fading into my last color, which is just a natural 100% merino undyed. Um, I think I got this from Zauberwiese, but it's just an undyed skein. So I just have to knit a couple of rows of garter stitch. Oh, the sun is coming in. A couple of rows of garter stitch and one last lace repeat. And then I have to do all of this all over again for the second half, which I'm not very motivated to do that. But oh well. 
It is definitely coming along and I do really like my fade. I, th I like the subtlety of it and I think, I, I personally just really like how all the yarns are kind of slightly speckled but not too crazy. So I'm doing this on 3.5 millimeter needles again, US size 4, which is smaller than what the pattern asked for, but I really like it and I think this might actually be really wearable because I knit the find your fade and I love knitting it but the shape was just kind of strange whereas this is going to be big and rectangular and actually quite useful and if it's not wearable as a shawl I can just use it as a blanket because it is going to be huge. So yeah very excited about this but not excited to knit the same thing all over again. So yeah thanks dropping. That is it for my knitting works in progress and now I have some spinning to show you guys. So one thing I've been spinning for a while is um, you might remember I went to a yarn festival uh, I think it was in March, beginning of March maybe, Hohenlohe Wollfest and I picked up a 70 gram huge fluffy bat of fiber from a company that didn't even, I think it was a very very small seller because the ball band that didn't even say where it came from so I have no way of telling you guys but it was this big um, bat of 90% merino and 10% um, nylon and I have now spun it up so these are the singles that I have spun up and I am planning to chain ply this into a three ply sock here and so you can see it's mostly white undyed merino and then there are just small pieces of color running through and I think once I apply this up and knit it into socks I think it's going to be a really really fun yarn I think these are going to be very pretty socks so this is ready to be um, chain plied I just need to get around to do it um, I let the singles rest for um, 24 or 48 hours if I have enough time which they have done now so yeah very very excited about this I spun this short forward draw on my Woolmakers Bliss um, wheel, my single treadle, which I love. I've had it for years and it's just my favorite wheel, even though I don't spin very often. So that is my first bobbin that I have to show you. And then, this is also part of acquisitions, but Daniel um, of Große Wolle, who I've talked about in the past, um, he has previously donated some yarn to the podcast and this is their card. I'll just show this to you. Um, they make amazing German sourced yarn and also now they, um, they are selling fibers. So he put out a call to test um, some new camel fiber and I said I'd really like to try that. So they sent me a bunch of camel. And I've never spun 100% camel fiber before. I've once spun a camel merino nylon blend, I think. But this is what I have left of the fiber. Um, so I was sent this and then very soon after I received it, um, they told me that there is something wrong with the fiber. So it's not going to be the final end result they're going to be selling. As far as I understand it, camels, they have like a very coarse um, top coat, which has really like coarse and rough and long hairs and then underneath is the really fine yarn stuff and apparently this still has some of the sort of top coat that is more coarse in it which is why they were not that happy with it but they of course said I can spin it up anyways so that's what I've done. So this is the bobbin that I've pretty much filled up so I'm not sure if I'm just going to apply this now or if I'm going to start another bobbin or try to squeeze more fiber onto this. But I really wanted to get all of this onto that bobbin, but that's not going to happen. But yeah, this is what it looks like. So as a backstory, um, I did some research because I was really interested in how to best spin this and I didn't find too much information besides the fact that apparently camel was very easy to spin and you're supposed to use quite a lot of um, twist. So I decided to just, to just bleh, I decided to just go for it and in the beginning it, it is a very very easy fiber to spin I think so too at least the one that I got. I can't speak for camel fiber in general but this one was quite easy to spin and 
At first I was spinning very very fine singles but they were quite hairy as you can see, probably the halo on here. And I didn't really want to end up with a super fine yarn because yes I was going to ply this but if I two ply this I think it would be very very fine. And yeah, I just didn't really want that. I wanted a sort of thicker yarn. So now I've spun it slightly thicker and I'm probably going to three ply this as well. So I'm expecting something like maybe a spore to DK, which that would be ideal, but it might be fine. I can't really tell. I'm, I'm pretty good at telling with my usual merino or merino nylon blends, but this is different and I just don't have the feel for it yet. But anyways, what I've spun so far, it's been quite fun. It's been a really fun, fast spin. And, ooh, I got five in my nose. Um, it actually feels really, really soft. I do quite like it. Um, I can't really tell if it's next to skin soft yet because I haven't finished it, I haven't washed it, but I do quite enjoy this and I didn't know if I was going to be crazy about this natural color, but I actually really like it. So yeah, that's quite a bit of spinning for this week and yeah, I sometimes spin and don't tell you guys because when stuff is on the bobbin on the wheel, I just don't like to take it off and mess up my entire wheel. But since I was finished with both of these bobbins, um, that just turned out or worked out pretty well. So yeah, that is it for spinning. And that's also it for my knitting content. So all I have to show you now is a tiny bit of stash acquisitions and then we're done. So like I said, um, I, um, they offered to send me this fiber. Um, and it, it looked much nicer than this when I got it. It's basically carded strips, so you can just just spin from it. But then at some point I kind of messed it up and then I just spun. I wanted to try sort of like a more woolen type spinning, so I just spun from one corner, so now it's kind of messy. But it didn't come like that. That was all me. And it smells very um, camel, camel-y, is that a word? But it's actually not too bad. I was worried that this was going to stink up my entire apartment, <laughs> but it didn't. Um, there's quite a bit of like veg matter in here, so I am kind of covered in all that now from spinning and my wheel is, so that's something to keep in mind, but nothing wrong with this at all. So anyways, um, they sent me this, but I decided, well, they're already sending me stuff anyway, so I might just pick up some more yarn from them as well. So I think in the past they sent me two skeins and I knit one up straight away to test, and the other one is still in my stash, so I decided to get some more. And they have... Um, two types of um, their sort of, I'm not sure what they're calling it, classic yarn, which is a 100% merino yarn. They have a two ply and a three ply, I think. And they're both relatively heavy weight. So I got the lighter weight, which I think is like 215 meters per skein or something. And I just got two more colors and I kind of bought myself an Ikea, Ikea color combination, didn't I? To be honest, I was expecting this to be quite a bit lighter, but maybe I told them the wrong color code. That is very, very possible. And But yeah, I really love both of these, especially the yellow one. It's just, it's just so happy and bright. And the previous yarn that I've tried from them was undyed or like more like a marred yarn. So this is the first time that I've tried their just solid dyed yarn. And yeah, it's really, really nice. It is very sheepy. I think you can see how sheepy it is. It is, um, I would say it's rustic, but again, it's not super scratchy. It is, it, it is, it's a rustic yarn as you would expect it, but it doesn't have a huge itchiness factor, at least not to me. And yes, it is going into summer, it is crazy hot. And I was ordering these and thinking about like snow and cozy hats with pom-poms, possibly Christmas gifts, and yeah, that is how my mind works. So yeah, very excited about these, and yeah, that is pretty much it. That's actually completely it in terms of acquisitions. There is one kind of acquisition that is kind of hurting me right now because um, my birthday is coming up, and um, I already know what Kai is getting me, which is the Neons and Neutrals Club by Rachel Coopy of Coop Knits. And um, the first shipment arrived and it's, I know where it is, but it's still wrapped up because I'm not allowed to open it until my birthday, 
which is fine, but it's kind of killing me to know that it's there and I can't open it. But then they also sent the pattern, of course, and I completely spoiled myself, not only by looking at the pattern and seeing the colors, but then I actually went on the project page and looked at the projects. Again, big surprise, people showed the yarn that they got, so I completely spoiled myself there, but I'm still really excited and I'm just generally really excited for my birthday. I'm one of these people that I, my birthday is on the 13th of May and basically as soon as the um, new year comes around in January I start getting excited for my birthday. So yeah, now it's really really close and I have an idea of some of the presents that I'm going to be getting. I'm always worried that there is not going to be any yarn involved but I don't think I need to worry about that this year and I'm really really excited for it. So now that I'm just babbling on about my birthday anyways, we might just work ourselves into life in general. So I'll just talk about what's going on in my life and if you're not interested in that, then there's not going to be any yarny content. So I will see you next week. So yeah, my birthday is coming up. Mm. And we have some <laughs> kind of crazy plans because it kind of happened that my birthday is also Kai's grandma's birthday and we found out at Christmas that, I mean, we knew that she was turning 100, which is crazy, especially since she's still living at home in her own house, which is insane. Um, and they were going to do a big 100th birthday celebration with like family coming in from all over Germany and they do live in the north of Germany, so it's always a, big, a bit of a trek for us to get there. Um, so that was the first thing that was going to happen on my birthday and I was like, well, how is that going to work? The second thing that happened is that my um, boyfriend's, his mate is getting uh, married in June. We're going to the wedding, of course, and his bachelor party is also on my birthday. So we had a bit of relationship drama for a couple of months until we figured it all out. And what's happening is we're basically doing a big Germany trip. So. Um, the coming Thursday is a public holiday here in Germany and then we both got Friday off so on Thursday we're going to visit my family which is about two hours north from where we are and kind of pre-celebrate my birthday then the next day we're going to go to Würzburg which is where I used to study and where we both used to live and we met each other so we have lots of fond memories there so we're going to go there and meet up with my best friends and Again, pre-celebrate my birthday because I'm crazy about my birthday. And then um, after that, we are going to drive up to Hannover, which is for us, it is very far north, um, and hang out with Kai's family and his sister. She has a one-year-old daughter. They live in the UK, but they're flying in as well. So it's going to be a big birthday and then we'll drive back down, which I'm not excited for because it's going to be a six plus hour drive. And yeah, that'll be my big birthday trip, which is going to be stressful, but it's also going to be really fun, I think. And then I've got the Monday off, which I am so glad for, especially even though I do have some sort of, sort of not so fun plans, like errands that need to be run. But I'm really happy anyways, because then I'm going to actually be traveling all over Germany again for work for the following three days. So it's going to be all over the place. Possibly intense, sadly probably not enough knitting time, but I also do think it's going to be fun. Because of all of that, um, I'm probably going to be recording the day after my birthday again, which is Monday the 14th of May. So that's probably when you will see me next. And then I thought the weekend after was just going to be a chill weekend, but it turns out we're going away again, which I'm excited about, but I just kind of thought there were more weekends in between. But time is just flying by at the moment, so yeah. That's a lot of information you didn't want, isn't it? Anyways, in terms of what's been going on, um, I mentioned last week that we were about to celebrate our four year anniversary and I hadn't been very well, but I got well just in time. So we had an amazing dinner. It was really, really, really nice. Um, and yeah, we've had a good week. Work is stressful as ever, but it's also going quite well. I had a good sort of Friday which made um, the weekend much easier to enjoy. Um, yesterday we went to Frühlingsfest which is sort of like a big fair here in Germany with lots of rides. We didn't go on any rides, we just 
walked around and ate some food. I found some Franconian sausages, which is very exciting if you're from Franconia like me. And I'm not going to go into the whole Franconia Bavaria thing because all Germans are going to be like, oh, and everyone else is not going to get it. So anyways, I'm just babbling on and on and on and no one's stopping me because Kai is out today. He's playing tennis. He's actually being super sporty and like running to tennis and then playing tennis and then running back home, which is just kind of insane to me. But then again, I should really do some more sports because I'm planning to do a run in summer for our company and I am out of shape. So much information that you guys didn't need. So anyways, um, I think I'm going to go back to knitting and I need to figure out what I'm going to cast on, which is exciting. Not that I really need to cast on more things now that I've already have four works in progress, but it's the stash down. Summer stash down is happening and I'm not going to feel bad about just casting on all the things and I'll finish them at some point. Who cares? And especially socks, they go so much faster than sweaters. Um, I know I've had two sweaters and I'm at the same time going for a while now and I'm not sure if that's such a smart idea for me because then I just get stuck. So maybe it's more like one sweater at a time, one shawl at a time and then like five pairs of socks. We'll see how it goes. Um, so I would love for you guys to join in as well. It would be really fun to knit together with you even though that would probably just inspire me to cast on even more things but oh well, it's supposed to be fun, right? So thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to hear from you guys, um, be it in the comments or on Ravelry or on Instagram. I love interacting with you. I hope you guys have a lovely Sunday. Have a great week. And I will see you at least Monday in a week, which will be when I'm a year older and probably not, not wiser at all. So anyways, thank you for watching and happy knitting. Bye.